All right, you're looking at the crowd. This is Sunday afternoon in New York City. There are uh, uh, many hundreds, I'd say into the low thousands here in uh, Zuccotti Park. We're talking with uh, Dr. Cornell West and Tavis Smiley. You heard uh, John Stewart. Now the, uh, I think the same guys who are in Madison, Wisconsin are here. Uh, they, uh, so Tavis, isn't the point, aside from the vitriol, isn't the point where this goes from here? How do you make this into a real political movement, Tavis? I think as it continues to grow, um, those questions are going to be answered in the coming days and weeks. Uh, but this, con this conversation already, uh, these protests, I should say, has, has gotten the attention of the mainstream media. You're there covering it live. I'm talking about on radio and television, every news outlet, the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, they have succeeded already in getting this conversation raised higher on the American agenda. And that's what this poverty tour that we talked, uh, that, that we took this summer and uh, that we're focusing and featuring next week on my TV show on PBS, the poverty tour is all about this very issue trying to get these matters, these concerns of everyday Americans raised higher on the American agenda for debate. So in some ways, Geraldo, to answer your question, they've already succeeded by getting us to focus on the fact that there are no jobs, that poverty is increasing, uh, and that Wall Street keeps getting away. They're sitting on a trillion dollars that they won't turn around and reinvest in the economy. So they make this crisis a self-fulfilling prophecy by not doing everything they can do. So these, these, these protesters are simply in my mind, Geraldo, have already succeeded to a large degree. Dr. West, though, when you look at this crowd, is this the face of the 99% or is this, in a way, a 1% of a different strike? No, I think you see a variety of different colors, different cultures, different sexual orientations, not only different religions, but we got agnostic and atheistic brothers and sisters. We're open to prophetic Mormons, prophetic Baptists like myself, prophetic Pentecostals like Brother Tavis. It's an all-embracing movement, but it focuses on that corporate greed. It focuses on the fact that we don't have enough people who love poor and working people and are willing to make them a priority, beginning with the children. Forty-two percent of our children of all colors living in or near poverty in the richest nation in the history of the world, that's moral outrage, both in the street and up here. And that, I think, America has to come to terms with that, though, brother. And it's not just a matter of, of Democrats and Republicans. I think we all, we, we would agree, I think, Brother Tavis and I, Obama is much better than, than, than Cain. But at the same time, the two parties themselves are undergoing decay. And this is moral outrage spilling over beyond the electoral political system, social movement impacting electoral political system. But they're not the same thing. OK, I got 30 seconds, Charles. You heard our friends Dr. West and Tavis give the progressive point of view. Why would an African-American person be a Republican? Uh, well, if you want the country to do well, the, the politics of division should be over. Blacks have voted for Democrats for 60 years. 99 percent, you can say they're not brainwashed, whatever you want to say, but their plight in life has not changed dramatically over the last 50 or 60 years. It might be time to listen to different points of view because perhaps they might work. Got to go. Tavis, thank you. Dr. West, thank you. Good luck with your tour on PBS beginning on Monday night. Stand by, Amanda.